what a coincidence. It's it's uh it's all about open search serverless, which I said was my favorite. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not giving you. I'm not giving you points for that one, man. Wow, it's, it's like I guessed it. Um, welcome to the street. First of all, tell us all about yourself and 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 what you do here at AWS. Yeah, so I don't know if Steve acknowledged it, but Am, you are my BFF, my new BFF now. <laughs> this is how I make new friends. No, I'm not. I'm not giving you a pass on that. I'm going to ask you in a bit. <laughs> We'll see if you change your decision. Uh, please don't. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you. It's an honor to be here. Thanks, uh, uh, AM and Steve. I'm Pavni Badakuri, uh, lead PM for Open Source Serverless, and uh, you know, been with the service for about three years. So oh. definitely super excited to be talking about Open Source Serverless and representing our team. You know, we've been working for a while on this, so. Mm -hmm. It's really great to be here to talk about, uh, you know, the recent preview announcement of Open Source Serverless. Yeah, well, congratulations on that. Yeah. Thank it's really you. good when, when teams get stuff out the door. Um, <laughs> been there, done that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, but it's a lot of reward at the end of it, right? It's a great feeling. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess maybe we should get this started by, I mean, what is it? What is what it is we're it? actually talking well, about? We, we should probably start with open search in general. Even, before we even get open search in general, yeah. yeah serverless side yeah. of it. Yeah. So I, I think what I'll do is, I know I was told that we don't want to present too many slides, but I'll just have a bunch of slides. <laughs> yeah, let's do <laughs> That's it. That's a talking point, right? So, um, so yeah. So what is open search? Open search is a distributed search engine, right? Uh, and then it also comes with a visualization tool, which is open search dashboards. And because it's a search engine, obviously the very first use case is your full text search. You know, a lot of our customers are using it to power their search applications, both in their internal networks as well as web facing. Uh, you know, so if you have a, a retail website and, you know, if you see that uh, customers are searching in the catalog or, or for a particular item, uh, there's a likelihood that it could be backed by uh, open search engine. Right? You know, the other one of the my favorite use cases too uh, that I think a lot of our audience might relate with as well, since uh, we've got a lot of um, you know operations and, and developer type people watching. Uh, uh, open search is a great place to store logs too. That's that's yeah. what a lot of people use. So logs from your applications, logs from yeah. your yeah. servers, things like that. Uh, a lot of people. Just shove them into open search because then you can query them later, right? Exactly. So, so that was the next thing, right? It's a distributed system. So it can process vast amounts of log logs fairly quickly. So very quickly, if you, you know, uh, people who work with logs all the time found a use case in open search where you know they could use open search to process their data. So you're, you're right, absolutely. It's you know, the other big use case for open search indeed is analyzing semi-structured machine generated data you know for yeah, I was all gonna, I, i'm glad you mentioned that because i was just thinking about that logs use case and i was gonna yeah. ask you like with the next break but i'm gonna interrupt you now anyway <laughs> <laughs> yeah. are people using that to store structured logs unstructured logs both um both both oh, okay right. yeah i know right. it's not relevant to well it is relevant but i was just curious so Carry on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, definitely a lot of unstructured data, but okay. also if you think about it, right? I mean, what is a search engine index? You're a uh, search engine, you're indexing the data, right? So, okay. and, and think from log analytics perspective, of course, you want to know the aggregates, right? You want to know, hey, uh, you know, point in time or, or even, you know, going back uh, some, some aggregates of CPU utilization over days, so on and so forth. But they also want to have some context, right? Yes. Hey, why did this happen? So when, you know, that's the beauty about open search. It can give you the actual document that has contributed to that particular outage, right? right. And then using that, you can basically go scroll mm -hmm. up and down and get more additional context. Um, uh, you know, that's, that's basically mm -hmm. why you, you would see people using index data for log analytics as well. Right. Oh. Interesting. Yes. I just think I just never considered using Elasticsearch for that. But yeah, I guess that makes total sense now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then there's the other part, uh, which is, 
you know, a lot of business analysts, they're always, you know, they have to crunch numbers, they have to show pretty mm -hmm. graphs and, you know, uh, time-based visualizations. And that's where you, they use open search dashboards, right? right? So, so these are the popular use cases for mm -hmm. open search. And that's, that's, that goes back to logs and metric data as well, where uh, you can have an operational dashboard exactly. uh, monitoring, you know, your, your, your in production or uh, workloads, right? And, and you can quickly see what's happening instead of having to dig through all of these, these logs themselves stored uh, or even mm -hmm. query it. I mean, it's interesting you may, you know, you told about that. You would think that these are the only use cases, but we are amazed by how customers oh, doing it today, right? Exactly. It makes a, a popular choice for a wide range of use cases, you know, IT operations, yeah. retail, finance, hospitality, uh, uh, you know, IoT, uh, stream, uh, you know, yes. social media, health, you name it, right? And I, uh, I have a background. My, my, my first college degree is in... Um, like writing in English. Oh. Right? So uh, I, I like to do a lot of tech projects on my mm -hmm. own that, that combine the two. And one of those is, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of uh, like project Gutenberg has just like full text of non copyrighted or, or things that have expired copyrighted uh, books. Right. And so like, I've done a lot of projects in the past, uh, just loading a bunch of books into open search, yes. uh, which, which is great for like researchers, right? Uh, okay. And people writing about a specific author, you can, you know, uh, do queries mm -hmm. across their collected works instead of just like, anyway, I, I like to nerd out about that too, because that's all text, right? Uh, yes. Very yeah. much text driven, right? And then that's a big part of uh, my background too, from my other. Your other life. <laughs> yeah. oh, I noticed earlier when we started to talk about what is Elasticsearch, and we were going, okay, let's go into Elasticsearch. Open search. search. Uh, sorry, open search. Thank you. Open search service. Um, this question or this statement passed by. How can search be serverless? <laughs> I was intrigued by that. So where does what is where does the serverless bit come in? What does that let us do? Yeah, so probably that's that's a good segue. Ooh, okay. Oh, look at that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I honestly did not know this slide was coming next. <laughs> yeah, and I realized this, uh, that you know, I should have probably taken care of the slide font over there. I see open yeah. slit H down, but that's okay. That's anyway, okay. let's focus on. We're amongst <laughs> friends here. We're good. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so let's go back to, uh, you know, how can search be serverless? I think... Um, uh, you know, when customers are running uh, such search engines, they have to look at, you know, they have to still manage the clusters, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. They have to make sure that the backend operations are, you know, which is uh, the clusters are being monitored and they're able to basically respond to the workload demands. Good example is, you know, one of the customers, uh, you know, hosting, web a hosting website, uh, a popular news website said that, if there is a if there is a world event, suddenly you know from thousands it goes to hundred thousands. You know the requests that we see on our search engine, mm -hmm. and they're not always prepared for such load, right? Because it's sudden, and you really haven't had time to plan for it, right? And and the customers are running uh, unpredictable workloads sometimes, and and that applies both to log analytics. Suddenly, if you see there's a rogue host and that's sending tons of logs to your uh, endpoint. Um, you know, someone has to manage it, right? Someone has to scale resources. And, in, and you know, open search also has, uh, it's not just scaling the physical resources. You have to make sure that the shards and the indexes are able to scale. They're distributed across various nodes. And that's where the serverless search concept comes back is where customers have come back and said that, hey, you know, we want to focus on our business applications or our search applications, mm -hmm. but don't have to manage the backend operations, yeah. right? And, um, you know, we listen to our customers and that's where we are here today with uh, open search serverless. So with open search serverless, they don't really have to worry about sizing. They don't have to worry about unpredictable workloads. You know, they don't have to worry about tuning the clusters and also the shards, right? I mean, how many shards should I create for my workload? And what if I suddenly, you know, see that my data size grew from 300 gig to say 700 gig. How do I manage that? Mm -hmm. right, so that, that's where it comes uh, down to. Um, open search will basically scale it, it provisions and it also scales 
resources based on the workload demands to give you consistent performance. So is this scaling storage as well as compute? Correct. So I think uh, this is excellent. Uh, Steve, you're like, almost, it's as if, you know, you read my slides. So <laughs> No, honestly, I didn't. I just, I'm, I'm new, I'm definitely new to open search, right? So I'm like thinking, okay, well, we're, yeah. I understand, yeah. you know, from a compute perspective, serverless, right? I don't want to manage servers, right? Okay. And then I'm starting to think about, well, how, what about storage, right? That's as exactly. more and more of this data comes in. What's happening to it? The key thing, the key thing that happens in, in any text-based search, uh, when you're, when you're, I mean, the really important thing that that opens the door to being able to query the data is what's called an inverted index. Okay. So it takes in the the text and then like breaks it apart, right, mm -hmm. into characters and then into words and then into okay. sentences. So you have this inverted index that can query across the full sentence or just the word, or and, and that is computationally. Uh, mm -hmm. Intense. intense right yeah. so uh it really has nothing to do with the storage side you're just going to store that index right. after the fact but being able to de i see the first line we were talking about this with aws glue earlier too mm -hmm. really the storage and compute decoupling is, is led to a lot of innovations in a lot of products but yeah sorry yeah. i didn't mean to steal your thought i get excited no, about open no, no and, and you're absolutely right right and and how does that translate to our use cases right i mean it's it's exactly what you were saying um, so take take example of a use case where the data sizes, you know, could be just uh, maybe let's just say 10 gig or, or even, you know, 100 gig, just pick a size. And for you basically provision for that, mm -hmm. but you want to make sure even though the data size is not changing, you could anticipate like the example we gave, sudden spike in searches. So you still have to scale your compute, although you don't have to scale your storage. But if they're tightly coupled, what you're doing is you're just adding nodes and you have to redistribute the data. And sometimes that may take longer, right? Especially if, if for la really large data sizes. So the very first thing that you know, we worked on is uh, decomposing open search into multiple microservices, right? And, and then you know, basically changing uh, the architecture behind the scenes where we decouple storage and compute. And that's what you see over here, right? Once we were able to do that, then we could have separate pipelines for uh, indexing and then for search. Now, how does that really matter? Um, so to, again, going back to the use cases, when we're talking about, remember we spoke about the two predominant use cases, log analytics and search. Typically log analytics is typically again, right? I mean, of course, exceptions may vary, mm -hmm. uh, but um, you would have in log analytics use cases, it's write heavy. So there's a lot of indexing. Right, but you're querying the data, you might be just running it, you know, you might be running fewer queries, queries. Whereas in the search use case, you probably are indexing just once a day or or you know, whatever, limited number of times where you're ingesting the data and indexing the data. But the search requests, obviously, especially if it's customer facing, you don't know. They're gonna be many, right? In thousands. So the requirement changes, right? Where one is more uh, write intensive, the other one is um, read intensive. So with this architecture, we were able to change so that now if we see there's a sudden burst in ingestion, we can just basically increase the compute nodes, right? We basically mm -hmm. scale the compute nodes on the indexing side without affecting the search performance and vice versa. So that's what the microservices are giving us the ability to independently scale, which is exactly. the essence of microservices, right? Independently exactly. scale services on the load that have to scale the whole stack. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And then the other thing is, you know, uh, we also built in redundancy in, in this architecture so that in case the nodes that are indexing, uh, if, if something happens and the node uh, goes down for whatever reason, the standby can immediately take over. Right. So that's that's the other benefit of this architecture, where customers don't have to plan for uh, redundancy, you know, easy failures or something like that. You know, this would basically help them, um, uh, you know, cater to their needs. So what's the, um, uh, hopefully you can talk to this, what's the secure service mesh? I'm kind of curious, because I, I, know, I know what service mesh means from me as a, as a developer, like mm -hmm. querying service, but what is it in this particular case? Yeah, so I, I think that's that's a great question. Now that we've broken it down into multiple microservices, right? So we really have to, you know, add, there is a there is a sidecar, security sidecar, running alongside every data node, 
in 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 the you know in in the indexing and the search pipeline. So it just like you know typical service mesh, it's basically you know that's the one that's handling the authorization before it can pass the connectivity. Oh, okay. Also, it's not just between the customer traffic, not south. But it's also the e-stress between different microservices. We're making sure that you know it's able to uh, that that only the services and the given permissions you know are able to services with the given permissions are able to access um, you know the the compute nodes. So, so this is something that's internal to the service. It's not it's, something I, as a consumer of open search service, would would interact with. I just get it as part of. You get it as part of exactly. It's okay. something so. So we basically uh, rebuild the service, uh, the security layer from ground up. Okay. Right? I think that that was one of the big things, you know, uh, where we basically have now authentication at the gateway layer, and then we also have authorization at individual uh, compute nodes. Hmm. We had a question from chat um, about open search uh, and. Uh, Sim, S I E M, uh, which yeah, yeah, yeah. Checking my uh, acronym translate, I believe is security, well, just, uh, yeah. security information and event management. It's it's like mm -hmm. a particular type of tool used in the security world for. Kind of, yeah. kind of. uh, is open search a sim? Uh, I'll, I'll let you take it. <laughs> I can oh. talk about it too, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to hear from you as oh, well. But I, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so open search, think of it as a platform where, you know, like I said, we are amazed by how customers have built applications on top of it. So we have a number of customers who actually used open search to offer SIM offerings, right? right. So uh, is it a SIM? I mean, uh, you know, again, there's a lot we are doing so that we can provide better security analytic features, uh, which is something that cons customers can consume as is or build upon and offer it as a service, right? So so either ways, yeah. Yeah, I would say you could use open search to build a SIM, right? Exactly. Uh, yeah. But lots of people, uh, especially people who know that term, right, or have heard that mm -hmm. term, uh, are using a product, right? There, there are a lot of products out there built as SIM, mm -hmm. or they're using, uh, you know, uh, something like open search for sure to, to build that themselves. But it doesn't mm -hmm. operate automatically like a SIM you would have to build not, not currently yes right yeah um and then we we had another question it, you know is this only for log analytics what about business data you already covered it uh, i love the answer you know it's 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 open search right it, it's yeah. open for all these different use cases i like that framing right it's open and it, it can be used i'm gonna use that. i'm gonna steal that <laughs> yours you don't have to steal it. all yours. But but you're right, right? I mean, people, it, like I said, some of the use cases we've heard is, you know, that you, you mentioned you, you guys were just talking about supply chain. Steve, I hope after this presentation, you're going to rate open search as your favorite as well. <laughs> it's moving up the stack. Let's put it that way. <laughs> but, but you know, uh, it was amazing. One of the use cases they said is they're using open search to be able to track, right? And, and if there is, you know, if there's a delay in a transaction, they're using, you know, uh, they, they leverage the alerts and they, they're basically alerted on the transaction, you know, uh, processing. So, yes, I mean, ultimately, it's it's a search engine that has a lot of use cases. And it, yes, it's used for business data as well. Uh, the other one is, you know, sales data. We've seen some customers use that, run heuristics and, and also basically historical patterns. They der derive historical patterns. Uh, or seasonality based on the data that's stored in in, in open search. All right, so I'm kind of I'm kind of curious now. Well, more curious even actually because no. I asked a couple of questions in there and you didn't transition to another slide with the answer. <laughs> so I'm wondering what's next. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I mean, I I think uh, what's next is of course we are working towards DA. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's uh, the next big milestone. So I'm hoping we'll be seeing you soon again, uh, you know, where we could have a session on <laughs> open search serverless. Uh, but, you know, from the preview, we got, uh, I mean, we were, by the way, overwhelmed by the uh, response we got from, uh, uh, you know, the preview. And it's still ongoing for those uh, that are not aware. Um, so there's, there's a lot to build, right? I mean, yes. it's, we just got started. Uh, so one thing is that, uh, you know, in the documentation, we've said that we didn't scale in 
at preview but but ga is going to have scale in as well and and you know there there are a lot more like i said uh, that we are looking forward to in the future the journey is just begun steve let's just put it that way <laughs> we've That's got a story of everything right it's just begun got some <laughs> question on pricing what does pricing look like for open search mm. uh, yeah so and i'm sure server the serverless feature affects that uh, very deeply yeah. Yeah. So, so I think, uh, you know, um, there, yeah, I should have probably, let me go to those slides quickly. Um, so what we're doing is, uh, you know, um, each, each, uh, probably in, let me just read, start with, um, the pricing is basically the compute unit that we are using for serverless is called open search compute unit. And, uh, you know, so we price based on the open search compute unit that has been used uh, by the nodes to process your data, which is either indexing or, uh, you know, performing search queries. And then there is also, uh, you know, we price for the data that's stored in S3. So S3 is basically uh, holding the leucine segments, uh, you know, that, that you basically uh, comes out of indexing the data. So... So it's the data stored in S3 as well as the OCU, which is the compute units. Uh, the OCU pricing uh, includes the obviously the CPU memory and the EBS volume, and also the data transfers between um, the data nodes and, and S3. Um, one more clarifying statement too from the same question, uh, what does pricing mm -hmm. look like? Uh, uh, the person also asked, um, do I can I point open search to, to Microsoft SQL database? Uh, the answer is like kind of right. Uh, you can move data from uh, Microsoft SQL database into open, but open search is a database itself and needs the data present, right? Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. Um, I think there's a lot we can do given that uh, we have the data stored in S3. But uh, yes, but but to your question, that's correct, right? Okay. And, and uh, another follow-up, I think, to a different person, but but I think a good question here. Does open search need to index before it's able to yes. search? I was just going to get to that, right? <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> yes, it does. It does need to index uh, before searching. And then that's where the power comes from, right? I mean, the inverted index, as you, uh, you know, rightly mentioned, that's what speeds up the searching uh, 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 you know, the, the queries, uh, response times as well. Yeah. Right. Here's an interesting question. Uh, these are, these are great questions that are flowing yes. in here. So I'm going to, I'm going to take the second one first. This is an interesting <laughs> one. Can I move the data to S3, run the index and delete it? Does the data have to be present once the indexes are built? Uh, when you say move the data to S3, we are storing the data in S3, right? Right. So right. That's behind the scenes. Yeah. Yeah, behind the scenes. So yes. Uh, so now, given the fact that uh, you know the the index data over here is sitting in S3, uh, and S3 provides uh, level nine durability, you mm -hmm. can definitely start using Open Search Serverless as your system of record if you want to. Right. right. Yeah. So I got some. There was some additional context came in after that question. It was basically a question from a fintech user, and they have restrictions on you know retaining data. Okay. So you know. That's well, that no that index will still have the data. Would basically. still have the data, right? Yes. yes, the index is the data still. Right. Like, right. It's just right. index data now, right? right? Index data, yeah. right? And they can delete the data, right? Yes. Absolutely, there are APIs to delete the data. Um, one of the uh, uh, you know benefits, and we were talking to a customer yesterday, uh, and they loved this architecture. Is the is the same, uh, I mean, well, not same, but some use case where they have to retain the data for. I mean, one of the customers said they just cannot delete the data, right? Mm -hmm. They have to keep it forever. Right. So, um, you know, should, this architecture now lets them basically keep the data in S3 for whatever time frame they want. And then, you know, uh, obviously it's uh, fronting, this data is fronting their portal. So then, you know, they're using this architecture basically to front their portal as well. Mm. Or oh, back their portal rather, right? right. right? Yeah. And uh, we, we had one more question come in around. Um, oh, sorry, Not that one. the wrong no. one. Uh, no. Processing power 
uh, or compute needed to process a natural language processing query, which I, I could give the classic essay answer here, the solution architect answer of it depends, obviously, right? Uh, okay. That's only the second it depends we've had all morning. So it's not, uh, it's not too much. <laughs> It does. It a lot depends on, you know, the, the, the complexity of the query. And that's, again, you know, goes back to the same reason is that why would people use it for log analytics? Because when you're debugging, you want to slice and dice the data in so many different ways, right? And that's the beauty of the query engine that's letting you basically run list, nested queries, aggregations, match, fuzziness, I mean, you name it and you, you could probably run it, uh, you know, um, against the search endpoint. So uh, yes, uh, definitely. So and and also, I wanted to talk about uh, you know what's coming next. Uh, yeah, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we we definitely you know this is going to be uh, the journey's just begin. We're constantly looking to improvise the performance, the scale we support, and also uh, currently uh, at at uh, you know in in the preview, we're not supporting some of the advanced features like anomaly detection or or you know. Um, or, um, you know, alerting and, and KNN, you know. So that's something that we will be adding, uh, you know, in, in the future as well. So that's, that's uh, going to be something that, uh, you know, the team's working on, and we're excited to offer it as and when it's available. Um, so uh, just to clarify, too, for uh, one of our users, it's, it, it's, it's Mike. Mike keeps asking questions, and I love it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but Mike asks, can I run a search like entertainment expenses in the last three months, natural language, similar to uh, the Bank of America mobile app, I'm assuming is BF, uh, B, uh, B of A. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I think, Mike, there's a bit of a miscommunication there. The queries you are running are not naturally language processed. The queries will uh, are, are open search queries, right? So you formulate them through usually some sort of SDK uh, in, in a language of your choosing, um, and those retrieve based off of search terms. Uh, so you can, it, it won't generate a report for you like that. If if whatever you indexed in Open Search contains the language entertainment expenses in the last three months, it will pull that document right that has that language in it. If you're searching for that search term, but it's just like any popular search engine that you're thinking of, right? Like it, yeah. mm. it, it goes in, you send in a search term query uh, and there are other types of queries too. I'm being very reductive. I know you want to jump in and, and, and yeah. clarify. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> let me in. <laughs> yes. No, no, uh, I mean, it's all good. I, I think you're right, right? So there's two ways to look at it. It's one, what you want your customers to type in into right. the and how you are instrumenting that behind the scenes to be able to provide those answers, right? So if you want to build a search application where customers can simply say entertainment in the last, uh, or what was it, entertainment fees in the last three weeks? Or yeah, expenses. Expenses, sorry, in, in the last three months. Uh, you know, what that happens is behind the scene, exactly what you said, you can you can basically tag it to certain fields that have entertainment so and, and the data range. So we should be able to pull it from there, right? But then definitely, um, NLP is something that we do. So we just, uh, you know, have an experimental feature in, in our open source oh. research project. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, down the lane, I, I'm, uh, you know, pretty sure we would be incorporating that and, and supporting that in, in the uh, open search serverless uh, uh, product as well. Very interesting. And, and again, Mike asked for a clarification uh, similar to Azure Blob Storage. Uh, no, um, that it's not. It's... Um, it's, it's a database uh, that, that supports querying functions against it, whereas Blob Storage is just um, object storage, right? You just can... S3. Yeah, it's it's the equivalent to S3 for AWS. Um, but with uh, OpenSearch, it's, it's an actual database that indexes based up on language, right? It, it is specifically doing it against language. Um, yeah. Talked about the inverted index earlier, right? Exactly. Okay. Cool. Um, right. Anyway, sorry. I, <laughs> like I said, I get really excited about open because it's like joining two of my my loves of of language and uh, tech. You know, so it's just so interesting to see. Um, 
Have you done the Guttenberg, right? Put yeah. You did? <laughs> I have. I have. I, I, yes. I, I play a lot with like, a, yeah. there, there's a bunch of NLP toolkits too that's that are fun to like drop, yeah. you know, like uh, the full text of Frankenstein and then be able yeah. to generate like Mary Shelley type uh, passages. But open search is cool for, for like yeah. I was saying earlier, like if you're researching uh, an author's, yeah. body of work right um exactly. being able to compare like you know i, I want to do a search across there to see how many times a certain word appears across every book this exactly. person wrote right yeah, yeah. um anyway <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i know i get equally excited so i can understand <laughs> I kind of wasn't joking, Steve, when I said this was going to be one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah, so, right. um, I'll, I'll let you off the hook on that one then. All right. All <laughs> I right. thought you were just buttering up to the next presenter, you know, because like, <laughs> you usually do that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but Steve, I'm waiting for those emotions from you. <laughs> this is pretty cool. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we are running short on time, unfortunately. Yeah. Any parting words, you, you know, anywhere? Uh, and if I need to put your screen back up, I, I can. But uh, anywhere you'd send people to uh, get started, learn more about yeah. Open Search Serverless. Yeah. So first of all, thank you. It was uh, enjoyable. I was a little nervous, but then you guys really made it really. <laughs> you did great. Come back anytime. I will. I will. I'll definitely take up that offer. Uh, but then, you know, so thank, thank you, uh, uh, both uh, AM and Steve. Um, yeah. It is public preview, right? So it's open for all. You don't mm -hmm. really have to, you know, uh, um, yeah, just go to Amazon Open Search Service. It's a, a serverless is a is a is a deployment option, right? Uh, you, we have managed clusters, and then now you have serverless. So we highly encourage customers to try it out and provide us feedback. And thanks to those that have already, you know, been trying and giving us a lot of good feedback. Uh, really value that. In terms of getting started, we already we have a bunch of blogs, uh, you know, and obviously we're going to publish more. There's also, uh, you know, two workshops. One catering to the log analytics, the other one to search, where you can actually get hands-on, you know, you don't have to really worry about where should I get the data set from, so on and so forth, everything's there. Uh, feel free to take advantage of those workshops and try it out, and then... Are those workshops linked from the, the Open Search homepage? They are, oh, yeah, cool. yeah, we do have that, and, and definitely, yes, there is. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, can't wait to hear more from our customers. Yeah.